Good morning. We've got another beautiful day. Um, I've made a trip to the dealer, got two of these. These are the parts that we need to fix the combine, I'm pretty sure. So I'm assembling some tools. We're gonna tank a fuel, take a tank of fuel over because I don't think we've got enough fuel to finish the field over there. And hopefully we'll be back up and running wheat here in a couple hours, um, about the time we would have been able to start anyway. Phil is hauling wheat to Toledo, that's good. He did turn the dryer back on, must be he didn't think that batch was quite dry enough. I don't think he ran another one up there, but whatever, that's fine. And uh, Dad's doing some mowing with the, the big mower. He likes to go around the wheat fields after we get them combined and, and mow everything down to clean up the edges and dikes and lanes and all that kind of stuff. So that's good. I'm gonna find some blocking and any tools that I could possibly need to make this repair and hopefully we don't have to run back and forth five times okay we're fueled up i think i've got everything i need so i'm gonna head over to the field uh brock you told me you were gonna be here at nine it's 9 15 and you're not here so i guess he'll have to meet us over at the field maybe he's already there taking stuff apart i don't know i doubt it uh the house framing guys are back they're setting more trusses today so we'll have a house update later this afternoon hopefully Okay, I got the fuel running. Um, we got to take that top chafer loose and at least lift it up to see if we can work underneath it or if we've got to uh, completely remove it. So uh, that's what the blocking is for. I need this. I need this. Okay, good news. So I've got this lifted up. We can get in underneath there. So the bolts that go in here are what fell out. Um, nothing looks damaged, which is good. It did slide back a little bit. Got into this right there. That's our damage. That's okay. That's just a seal. But it kind of held in there. It couldn't have been completely loose for very long. It looks to me like we lost this bolt at some point a while ago. And this one over here was keeping it in place. But you can see how we've got some wear around the hole clearly that one was in there with it loose and it was bouncing around a little bit and um not tight and so i think when that bolt fell out is then when we had problems uh you can see the tailings uh auger under there everything in that looks okay so i think if we put our new bolts in there get it tightened down properly and we should be good to go the only other thing I was concerned about is the electrical connection that's on the outside there because when it slid, it may have broke that. I mean, when it slid, it for sure broke that. It just needs new pins. That's fixable. So this is the hardware that holds that in. It came as uh, one piece in a, uh, a kit, I guess you would call it, but it's got the bolt. There's a spacer to tighten it, and then this spring the spring is there to allow it to move a little bit and to give so that it doesn't break stuff a couple of washers retaining rings and o-ring to hold everything on the bolt so nice it all came pre-assembled <sighs> well i don't know if it's not quite lined up right or if we screwed up the threads behind the but i can't get these bolts to start to thread in there so we're gonna have to pull the chafer so we can get in there and work better well Huh, maybe it wasn't because they were loose. No wonder I couldn't get them started. The bolts broke. Maybe they were over tightened. It wasn't me. <laughs> All right, well that makes this a little more complicated because now we got to get the threaded stud out. However, because it's broken, it should, should, should thread out fairly easily. We're about to find out though. I'll see that right. Just twisted it out with my fingers. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. All right. I was successful in getting one of the broken bolt studs out. The other side is broke off more in the hole, and I can't. Uh, I can't get my fingers on it to turn it. So we're gonna run back to the farm and grab a drill and a drill bit, a punch, and a hammer. 
just in case and we're gonna see if we can't drill it out it's loose it's not tight I just can't get on it to grab it so if I can get a drill bit to bite it all it'll spin it right through the hole and it will be good got it just took a little drill and once I got a hole started it grabbed and twisted it right through so pull some of our blocking out here nothing is bent so everything's good here um, this bolt should now actually thread into there there we go and the other side so the question becomes why did the brake bolts break um, the most logical and likely answer is we over torqued them so we'll be hand tightening these hand tight with a ratchet not with my fingers okay it's in I've got them as tight as I want so you'll remember there's a spacer on that bolt and basically what we're doing is tightening the bolts down to the spacer the spacer is bottoming out under here where that that nut that stud was and then the hole in the sieve frame is bigger than the spacer and it uses this spring here and this washer and stuff so that that spring still has room to move we did not over tighten the spring before the sieve still could move and you know use that spring for a cushion the problem was the bolt was too tight to the spacer and it broke the bolt and uh at least that's my theory um likely we tightened it with that milwaukee impact and just overdid it so it's never happened before but something that can happen um minimal damage electrical connector is the big problem it seems so uh we'll get the chafer chaffer i've been told it's called a chaffer not a chafer um slid back in here tighten that down with a ratchet and then this side of the combine is good to go okay we got the chaffer chaffer put back in um everything i think is good back here that finger's down a little bit. It's the last one, doesn't matter. Uh, Brock's gonna get those couple pieces that we had to take out, put back in. And it looks like the biggest casualty of this whole thing is this uh, electrical connector. The plug side seems okay. So I can either fix this plug or that's just a short wire harness that goes to the uh, chaffer and then plugs in right here, so can't be that terribly expensive of a wire harness we may just put a new one on there um all right so we do have one other issue that we have to address though the reason that we found that was because that auger is plugged and uh this chain jumped off i gotta take this shield off and i'll explain again there's our problem so here's the issue though is that this doesn't turn uh, there's got to be something wedged in that auger in there. I can show you from the other side, but I brought some pipe wrenches, so we're going to see if we can't turn that backwards and get it to fall out of this little hole right here. Okay, see the smoke? There goes our firefighter. I'm so proud. Uh, the town is right there, so he's just going to run the gator into the fire station. Anyway, I got this to spin backwards, and found found right somewhere right here uh, come on you see it right there there's our broken bolt that caused our problem jammed up that auger here's the thing though it's actually a good thing that it jammed up that auger because by doing so it alerted me to a problem had that gone through and gotten thrown right out the back of the machine who knows when I would have caught that? Probably when the sieve broke in pieces. Uh, so thank goodness that it actually caused a sensor or something to go bad. Um, and it was something that I could find. So I'm gonna close up some doors here, put our covers back on, and we should be able to fire the combine up and try it and see if everything works. I got some side covers to put on here yet, but there's that auger. So it starts, it drives from the other side, but basically it just is pushing material back across the cleaning shoe and back in, and then it falls down there and back onto the sieves out through the back. So, um, yeah, I'll put these covers on and go run. 
So I did shut down rather abruptly last night. So we got a little material in the head. Uh, we're gonna start this, the separator up. Door open to listen for strange noises. Ready? Oh, we gotta open the grain tank covers. Oops, I forgot. I wasn't ready. Take two. Remember our tailings? There, it's going down. It means it's running. We got dust out the back. I don't hear any strange noises. Wait, we got her fixed. All right, I just gotta put these shields back on. Okay, the combine is good to go. Um, it's a little early to start combining. It's still in about 10.30. We probably could get going, um, but I have a little bit of other stuff I need to do. I've got a seed customer called looking for a box of beans for double crop, so I'm gonna run those to him real quick, and then we'll come back and start combining. You guys wanna be gawkers? And go see the fire? Try and stay out of the way. Ah, oh, there goes Brock's other fire department. So he actually works with two departments, Waldron and Pioneer. And uh, we were half a mile from Waldron who got the call and those are the, the Pioneer boys there. His buddies come work with him. Ah, right. field fire over there. So is that the standing wheat field or is it a harvested wheat field or something else? Looks like standing wheat to me. Yep, definitely a standing wheat field. That's a bummer. We're gonna not drive down that road and get in the way. Uh, it's partially harvested, so who knows if the area is where they're... There's another fire department. That's at least the third one. Oh, it's these guys as we feel. I hope they didn't have a combine burn up. They're out there with a tractor going around stuff. City of Hudson, that's a fourth fire department. Oh, that's a bad deal. There's something burning out there. Sorry, I know that wasn't the best video, but I didn't want to drive right by it and uh, trying to avoid traffic and stay out of the way. Um, I do know those guys, they're friends, neighboring farmer. It looked at one spot, there was a bigger flames, like there might be a piece of equipment out there or something burning. I hope not. Um, I hope they get it under control quickly and there's not a lot of wheat lost. So, bad deal. All right, it is 11 o'clock. We should be going to combine wheat shortly but I got to run that box of beans over to a customer it won't take me too long hopefully 45 minutes or so uh, dad may go combine before I get back I don't know we'll see but this video is probably about 15 minutes long already gosh I hope not and this is the least exciting thing I'm gonna do today so I'll see you when I get back all right I'm back we're gonna go plant some beans so Jack finished planting this field that we were in there the other day when I was planting beans late that one night he finished it yesterday except for a few spots he had to go around some stuff. There is like an acre or two's worth of beans left in this planter and the air seeder and we're switching varieties before we go to the next field so I want to try and run it out. He had gone around some spots where they had left some windrows like this so I'm just going to patch them in. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to piece stuff in as best I can to use up the seed more or less. Well, Jack had done a pretty good job. Um, he got most of them around those windrows. They they did come in and rake them, and they made them too close together in spots for me to get between them with the air seeder, uh, which, no big deal. It's, it was minimal that he would walk around, so I pieced in when I could where they had moved them. Um, and now I'm just making a pass right across the field on an angle right up to my driveway, just trying to plant some seed out. All right, Jack's loaded up. He's going to go plant. Uh, where they bailed a little bit yesterday. I don't know that he can do much more than 20, 25 acres, something like that. So he should be good on seed. We're going to take a semi over and go start combining. And um, um, Brock's going to come run grain cart. Phil is hauling wheat to Toledo. Dad's going to go spray. Lots of stuff going on. Let's do this. It is way later than it should be getting started. Almost one o'clock. So if we can finish here, and then we've got uh, 40 acres just down the road that I think we'll go to next. If we get those two done today, I'd be, I'd be pretty happy. 
So Brock is back. You guys, you guys want to ask him about the fire? So, uh, what happened to the fire this morning, Brock? Well, somebody wanted to have fun and uh, set a fire. So there was no equipment that burned up. It was arson. That's what we're thinking. It was partially uh, harvested already. Farmer lost about 15 acres a week. Ouch. So somebody set the fire intentionally, and there was 15 acres of standing wheat that burnt. How many different fire departments did you have there? I mean, I saw four, so. I can think of five right off the top of my head. Um, on a 100 degree day, it takes a lot for people to work in the heat, so at least five departments. All right. Well, good job. Were you the first one there? I was not. I was close. Second, but we still made it. All right. Well, good deal. So Dad is now currently uh, decided he's going to arm himself and set it the next wheat field that's right on the corner of a main road so that he doesn't, um, we don't have any issues with people burning our wheat fields down. So unfortunately this is a fairly uh, common re recurring theme around here. Um, back 20 years ago, almost, between 15 and 20 years ago, at one of our farms down to Berkey, we had a wheat field that uh, somebody set on fire. And it seemed like every year there was a wheat field or two that burnt down there and it was always started along the road. Somebody's throwing something out of a car window or something, but they were definitely intentionally set. It has moved and come out this way over the last 20 years. I don't know if it's the same person, if it's some dumb kids or what it is, uh, but it's not good and it's a serious thing. Um, we only, other than that one, we've only had one field burn up here, but it was wheat stubble. It was well after harvest and it didn't, I mean, it was not good, but it wasn't a huge ton of damage. So, yeah, bad deal. We are really going to have to study the yield data off of this field after harvest here. Uh, we have several interesting things going on. We had that variety change that we talked about yesterday. Like the difference between the and the and we also have some herbicide or some fungicide trials out here. So we had two different head scab fungicides that we used. I talked about this a little bit a week ago when I was flying um, the drone, um, but we used Prosaro on a lot of it. And then we tried this Miravis Ace this year. Well, this field has a split of both and untreated. This side, Prosaro, see the bright strip? Miravis Ace, that side, untreated except for out where we already combined along the road dad left like two sprayer passes untreated but it's basically what's left there and then we've got a strip of the miravis and then the rest of the field is prosaro and can you guys see it because i can see it clearly the miravis has brighter healthier looking wheat we'll see what the yield does but it looks impressive from here and we'll see what the untreated does but look at my yield map I've done like a round of it. We're dropping off big time. So we've got some studying to do here. All right, um, well, I just unloaded. So Brock's taking that up to the trucks and that means we're on a new load and we're gonna punch a hole right through here on the untreated uh, portion of the wheat, no fungicide for head scab here. And then um, we'll we'll take one out of the middle of the Miravis and we'll take one out of the Prosaro over there and we'll just do a little preliminary see what the combine says kind of yield comparison so I'm gonna just unload setting still here um, on the ends rather than going through so we'll, we'll look at these totals when we're unloading okay so that pass was right through the untreated portion you can see right there is the color variation we're about one pass off of it so we're gonna skip two passes and go through the middle of the treated uh, there is the pass we just made and for the load totals we did almost two acres average was 95.9 now 95.9 is awfully darn good wheat but let's see how it compares to where we treated it 
Well, sometimes things don't always work out like you think they will. So we did that pass through the, the Miravis treated stuff. Average 96.1, that's only two tenths of a bushel. That's not significant. I am I am surprised by that. Um, well, I don't know. Did not pay for the fungicide if it was only a two tenths of a bushel and that's not even significant enough to say that it was two tenths of a bushel. So yeah, interesting. Uh, we'll do one out of the Prasaro over there and compare and it doesn't necessarily mean that it didn't pay. It just means that um, we may have had more field variation than I give it credit for. It is, it does, the field does drop off as we go, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. We'll do some more rounds and see. Hmm, well, that was a strip out of the Prasaro treated area. 93.4, which is substantially worse. Uh, it shouldn't be worse, it should, it, 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 it worse to be even and not have any advantage, but um, I don't know, we'll have to look and see if there's something else going on there. We'll get more of it done and do some uh, looking on the computer. I need to double check. Maybe maybe these two are my treated strips and that's the untreated one, in which case they were neck and neck and three bushel better, which is good. That would make more sense. But I don't know. I don't know. Interesting results. What is this guy doing? Crawling all over my equipment, taking pictures. All right, well, we're making some progress. I had a nice visit and ride for a little while there. Um, he'll keep dropping a little bit. The sweet's not as good over here. It'll be interesting to see if that trend continues. I imagine it will. Um, definitely a variety, varietal difference there from yesterday, but not seeing a lot with this fungicide application difference. So, I don't know. Interesting. We'll... Um, finish this up we got what, 18 acres to go here and then there's a little piece across the ditch um, and we'll move but yeah keep going well there's the end of this field got a little disappointing honestly 94.1 which I, I'm not complaining 94 bushel wheat is really good um, but after this promising start and then uh, what well, the other fields have been you can see it really dropped off once we got halfway across there, or really once we switched varieties, but especially once we got halfway across. All right, well, we gotta go unload and um, jump across the ditch. There's, like I said, I think eight or nine acres over there. Um, we're just getting started in this field here. You can see it's, it's kind of dog leg shape, whatever. Nine acres, take us less than an hour. That's, uh, that's not our corn, but it looks really good. It's quite tall and gonna be tasseling here shortly. Speaking of which, Dad drove by one of my earlier-ish planted fields that was an earlier maturing corn, 103 day, and he said it's starting to push tassels. That's pretty awesome. So when we get time, we'll go drive down there and take a look at it. So this combine, well, basically all deer combines made in the last 15 years at least, have something called Contour Master. Basically, the filter feeder house tilts so you can raise one side of the head up versus the other. It's very handy in situations like this where I don't want to combine that windrow and bring all that material back into the combine. I can pick that side up and leave the side that's still combining down. Works pretty well. Or in spots like this where I got a half a pass and I'm, well, getting out of it, but on the previous windrow, I can just lift that side of the head up and now we're past it so I can level it out. Almost done here. Um, we're moving a half a mile that way when we're done. So we'll drop the head and get the combine there. Brock can help us move, but he's got to go at six. It's basically five now. So get us moved and get started and then we can take over. We should be able to make rounds over there. They're shorter rows so we don't have to run the grain cart. Okay, uh, Brock went to go get us a pickup so that we can move this header cart. I'm going to get it unhooked, but I need two hands. Clean stuff out a little bit while we're waiting for Brock, and we've got a minute. I want to uh, look at the combine and just make sure that everything looks okay. Our repairs from this morning. Everything looks good in here. Bolts are still there. Everything's tight. All right, we're good. It's all good. 
Well, I hope the field is better than the Endros back here because that was pretty crappy wheat. Ouch. All right, well, we're third pass off the road. It is better here, 90s, 80s, a lot of 80s. Uh, a lot of reds and purples on the map, that's not great. So I'm trying to figure out what we did different here. And uh, honestly, the only thing, there's two things that come to mind, right? So this is the same variety that was most of what that last field that we did was that was not as good as the other variety. So that's got to play into it. Uh, the other thing is planting date. This stuff was planted about a week later than most of the rest of what we've harvested. Well, the, the best fields that we've harvested anyway. Uh, but it was October 5th. It was not late by any means. So I don't know if that planting date, you know, uh, I think it was September 29th versus October 5th. So that's that's the biggest difference. We didn't treat it that much different from a uh, management standpoint. They all got the same fungicide or at least a fungicide pass. This got the Prosaro. Um, it all got uh, about the same amount of nitrogen, fertilizer, herbicides. So I don't know. Okay, since Brock had to go, uh, Dad came over and he decided he's going to run the combine. And I'm going to run a green card. And that's good. So we had like 30 acres to go in this field. There was like 40 here total. So I got 10 done. Uh, it should take us a couple hours, two and a half hours or so. And we should get it done tonight. It's only quarter after six. So by 8.30, 9 o'clock, we'll be wrapping it up. And that'll be good for today. There, you can see how that uh, tilt works on the combine a little better from here. It's combining just along that strip, but doesn't want to take the windrow in, so put one side down and lift the other side up. <sighs> I really like running the combine, but grain cart's a little more relaxing. How long do you think it will take me to fill this wagon. That is, that is a tiny little, how are we gonna, okay. Okay. There. Watch this. Watch me spill wheat all over. Uh, get my, get my stuff all set up. There we go. 15,000 pounds. Oh yeah. Too bad. I mean, we spilled a little, but it wasn't horrible. Combine it. Is this wheat getting any better? Yeah, uh, just low ground. It's up. Um, it's averaging 84 now. Well, that's better. Well, that's that's better. It's still not. It's still off from everything else. Oh, and here this dip, this low ground is in the 90s. Better. So one thing we don't have a great spot on this field to park trucks and a good driveway to get them off the road. <coughs> so there is a spot up here where it's relatively flat to the field that Phil parks the trucks, but. I am being that guy and running a full, full, half full grain cart and unloading on the road. I did turn my camera to the back view so that I can tell if anybody's coming behind me, but I have seen one car go down this road since we started the field, so I'm not really holding up traffic. All right, Dad's down to about seven or eight acres left out here. Um, in shorter rows, we're behind this house lot, so he can make rounds no problem. Uh, I had somebody call me 
looking for some double crop beans tonight. So I'm gonna take a truck back to the farm and go down there and get those out and get them to them. They're close, so no big deal. Let Dad finish this. Let's see if Jack got all these beans planted out. He did indeed, nothing left. That's good. I'll have to look at the monitor and see how far he made it and um, how much more we could plant, you know, that they've got straw out of the way. Unfortunately, the baler guys did not bale straw today uh, up there. They had some hay they had to get made, and I understand. Um, we aren't going to get these double crops all planted uh, before it potentially rains tomorrow, so that's no good. Let's go deliver some beans. Is eight bags really worth it? I mean, whatever. I'll take them. If it's still light when I get back, we'll go look at the house. They got a bunch of trusses on the south side of it today, which looks good. Nice. Got a pretty sunset tonight. All those plot signs. Place looks good. Let's go check out the house. Well, we're getting rough. Can't see much from here, I guess, can you? Trusses are up there over the master bedroom, bathroom area. Looks good. We've definitely got a little bit more uh, complexities going on with the roof here than, than ideal for cost purposes but it's the look that my wife wanted, so that's what we're going for. But double peak on the front of the garage, and then there's a hip up this slope here. So they've got that all framed in. They had that done last week. Got the overhangs put on there. Got a little sheeting to do yet, but uh, that looks good. And then we've got the, the garage roof face, and the garage, and the peaks visible from the front of the house are an 812 pitch and the peaks visible from the rear of the house are a 612 pitch. So that roof is flatter than that roof, um, which doesn't really matter except for that little hip right there is kind of odd shaped. It gets wider as it goes up towards the peak there. Um, but yeah, that looks pretty good. And then there's a hip on the back of the um, bedroom here. There will be a peak over the garage, or not the garage, I'm sorry, over this uh, rear porch. So that's got to get, well, obviously that's all needs framed and everything yet, but hopefully they'll be here tomorrow and they can work their way across there, but I don't know, we'll see. Speaking of tomorrow, there is a pretty good chance of rain tomorrow. In fact, check out the forecast, right? Uh -huh. That's not real promising for wheat harvest, baling straw, or planting double crop beans. That is real promising for the corn and soybeans and double crops that are already growing and planted, and I am not going to complain. We're not dry, but we're getting dry-ish. It's drying out, and it is time for another shot of rain. So um, uh, if we get some more rain this week, things are going to keep growing fast. The corn is just, some of the corn is just about to start pollinating. That's one of the most critical timings for getting rain, so let it rain. We're... Um, Doing really good on wheat harvest. Uh, I think we're down to about 100 acres to go is all. Like we're three quarters of the way or more through it. So we had one heck of a good weekend uh, week since Friday and things are going well. I think those first planted double crops are growing yet. Let's dig one up and see what we find. It's been three days, three days. Right there, buddy. They'll be poking through tomorrow. I would guess. Oh, broke that one. Yep, but there's one right there, just about ready to come up. Cool. There's one. Cool, cool. All right, Dad got done. I helped him get some stuff moved back. Phil's gonna unload trucks. I'm going home. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let's see what the weather's like in the morning, and we'll see you tomorrow.